In this clip, I'm going to solve a multiple angle trig equation. And what that is, is a trig equation in which the trig function is not just the sine of x or the cosine of x or the tangent of x. There is some other number preceding the x, um, some other number other than 1. So anytime there's a number in front of x other than 1 in a trig equation, I call that a multiple angle trig equation. Now for this particular one, what I want to do, because it's a secondary trig function, I'm going to reciprocate both sides, and I'm going to write this as the sine of 3x is equal to negative 1 half. I just feel a little bit more comfortable working with this in its primary state. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a legend, and I'm going to let theta equal 3x. And what this step is going to do, it's going to bring it to this multiple angle situation to something that I'm really familiar with. So now, instead of sine of 3x, I'm going to say the sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. Now I know that sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4 and has a reference angle of pi over 6. So in the first case, theta is equal to 7 pi over 6 and all of its coterminal equivalents. That means I just keep rotating a revolution and another revolution and another revolution. And there's another place where sine is negative a half and that's going to be at 11 pi over 6 quadrant 4. And all of its revolutions or all of its coterminal equivalents. Now, this collection of answers would be the solution if I were solving for theta. But my initial intent was to solve for x. So I go back to my legend and I ask myself, well, how would I get this x by itself? To get it by itself, I'd have to divide by 3. So in order to get x by itself, I need to divide everything through by 3. Now, this is going to yield a new expression. 7 pi over 6 divided by 3 is now 7 pi over 18. And instead of adding 2 pi n, I'm going to add 2 pi over 3 n. And 11 pi over 6 divided by 3 is 11 pi over 18. Again, plus 2 pi over 3 n. Now, I'm going to use these new expressions to figure out my final answer, but because I'm dealing with fractions, I'm going to take this and I'm going to rename it so it has a denominator of 18. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 6, and the same thing goes down here, and this is going to become 12 pi over 18n. So as I generate my list of answers, the first scenario I'm going to look at is when n is 0 which basically knocks this out and we're left with 7 pi over 18 and 11 pi over 18. That's certainly in the initial interval that I'm supposed to be looking at. The next case would be if I let n equal 1. So 7 plus 12 is 19 pi over 18. And then if I add this and this together, I end up getting 23 pi over 18. That also is in the initial interval. Finally, if I let n equal 2, then I've got 24 pi over 18, which would give me 31 pi over 18, and then 24 plus 11 is 35 pi over 18. Now, if I were to let n equal 3, then I've got 36 pi over 18, which is 2 pi, and if I add on to that, I'm outside of the interval. So I'm going to stop here, and these are the answers when solving a multiple angle trig problem. At this time, you should go on and do any problems associated with clip number 12.